So after watching that video, you can see that in the Doppler effect, when a car is coming toward you, you hear it as a higher pitch. And as it goes past you, you hear it as a lower pitch. This is known as the Doppler effect. And we can add this definition into our concept catalog. A change in the frequency of sound or light as the source or receiver move toward each other or away from each other. And it causes, a little typo there, so that should be it causes a change in blank for sound or blank for light. And we can see that it causes a change in pitch for sound. And it would cause a change in color if it were light. All right, so what's the reason for this? Hopefully you already have a pretty good idea from the video you just watched. And we're going to we're going to take a look at this make a little diagram. So let's imagine that we have a car. Now let's take a look at a car that's passing a person. So let's draw a person standing here. Car is approaching them. Uh, strange looking car. Let's see if we can fix that up. Okay, so it's going to the right. Uh, as it's coming toward them, it's producing sound, and the sound waves are getting bunched up together. Because as it's giving off the sound, it's also pushing this. Uh, pushing the sound waves closer together. So the person is going to hear it as a higher pitch. Uh, higher frequency, and let's put it then in parentheses, pitch. Once the car is passed, so we can draw the car now over here. Now the car is going away. It's still producing the same sound waves, but those sound waves are getting stretched out. So it's going to now hear these sound waves as a lower frequency, lower, lower pitch. So that's why we get that effect of cars going past, especially you think about it as a rate at a, at a racetrack. You hear the as it's coming toward you, it's a high pitch, and as it goes past you, it's a low pitch. We can actually graph this, and um, I'd like you to, underneath there, just roll this up here, let's draw what a graph of this would look like. So we're going to have horizontal axis, which is going to be position. Let's draw the person standing here. This is position. And the vertical axis is going to be frequency. So as it's coming toward the person, it's going to be at a higher frequency. And then as it's passing them, it's going to jump down to a lower frequency. So the Doppler effect is the fact that it's higher coming toward and it shifts to lower going away. And what would they hear if they were riding in the car? If they were riding in the car, they would hear this. They would hear whatever the pitch is right in the middle. So this would be what we might call um, F0 or um, unshifted. This is what they would hear if they were in the car. Oh, let's fix that. In the car. The big point about Doppler effect is it only happens when the source of the sound and the listener are getting closer together or when they're getting farther apart. If they're in the car, then you're not doing either one of those, so you don't hear a shift. 
Um, students com commonly make the misconception that as the car gets closer, the pitch gets higher. That's not true. It stays at a constant higher pitch so that you get the knee and then it switches to a constant lower pitch. What does happen as it gets closer is it gets louder. But that's not the Doppler effect. That's just some other effect of the waves being closer. So there's been less dampening in the air. They're less spreading out and they're just stronger amplitude. So what, the, what it would look like for students who are thinking erroneously about it, I'll draw it just so we can kind of visualize what I said. Students sometimes think that it's going to get a higher pitch, and then it switches, and then it gets lower pitch as it goes away. But this is not true. So you might think, well, what's the value of this? I mean, yeah, it's kind of a cool effect. Well, one thing is, as you saw in that last video, the same thing happens with light. So when you are looking at the night sky, you might be looking at a star that is moving away from our star. And that light's going to actually be a little bit um, what we call blue shifted. I, s I said that wrong. It's going to be red shifted. If it's moving away from us, it means that the f frequency is going to be a little bit lower, the wavelength is going to be a little bit longer, and that's going to tilt the color to being a little bit more reddish. Or conversely, for a star or a galaxy for that matter, coming at us, the light's going to be a little bit blue shifted because the wavelength gets a little bit shorter, the frequency gets a little bit higher, and we can actually see a perceived change in the light. So in order to see small changes in the light, you have to use um, telescopes that can make that kind of a measurement. But there are some that are a big enough effect that you can see it, um, even with the, um, with the unaided eye. Another example would be radar guns that police use. They shoot the gun toward your car. What they're shooting is a beam of microwaves. That beam hits your car and reflects back. The faster you go, the faster you're coming toward the policeman, the more those reflected waves are going to get bunched together during the process of reflecting off your car. So the waves coming back to the policeman will be closer together the faster you're going. And um, if your car is going away from you, it can still get a measurement on your speed. Only in that case, the microwaves are going to hit your car, and as they get reflected back, they're going to be a longer wavelength, lower frequency. But the point is that the gun can look at the change and figure out how fast the object is moving from that. Okay, we'll do a little demonstration of this in class, and I'll see you then.